Hi there, welcome back to Big Fish Little Fish Aquatic. So today it's been a while since I've showed you the saltwater aquarium with the clownfish in here. So I figured I'd give you a quick update on what's going on, what's changed, some of the new corals I've got in there. Um, so yeah, let's do this. So the aquarium's doing well. Uh, two seconds, sorry, let me just turn off the pump. That's much better. So yeah, the aquarium's doing really well. Um, it's been running now for a little over a year. And um, the two clownfish are doing really good. They're waiting for something to eat, so I'll chuck some food in for a second. So we've got the female here on the left and the male is on the right. Doing really well. Had no problems with them really. So fingers crossed that's how it will continue. Um, so now I've got my green star polyp in here and it's really, really starting to take off now. And if I go around this side, you can see that it's actually started to slowly encrust onto the rock. Um, so it's really starting to spread really fast. So that's doing really good. And then I've got my green mushroom in the middle here. And I'll just share with you a footage of this actually. The um, a bit of fish food landed on the mushroom. You can actually see it move the fish food through its little ball tentacles into its mouth. That's really cool to watch. Uh, yep, they're, they're, yeah, these so I've had these two corals now for probably three months. Um they settled in really well. Re really uh really taken well to the aquarium itself no real challenges with them um, I actually haven't been been target feeding these two corals because they, they seem to do just fine without the need for um, additional feeding or specific feeding for the corals I have got um, some coral powder polyp powder um, and when I put it in there it just kind of made a mess more than anything um, I'd probably have to get a turkey baster or something so that I can actually get it straight down to the polyps but they like I've said they seem to be doing just fine with just the light um, and then catching any bits which obviously the fish don't don't eat. So a new addition would be um, this coral here it's my Superman coral and um, it's very similar it's a mushroom coral similar to my green recordia I think it's how you say it don't uh, crucify me if I've got that wrong um, but that's a bubble tip coral all soft corals in here I don't have any um, hard corals in here at all um, so yeah this this uh, coral is, is really fairly, fairly new it's probably two months I've had it in here for two months um, whereas I've had the bubble tip and green star polyp for three months and um, it normally is a lot bigger it normally actually has spread it normally spreads let me just get my finger here so it normally spreads all the way out around here so it's really retracted itself in and I think it might be because it, it does this every now and then after a water change but the parameters of my water changes always match the actual aquarium itself so I'm not sure why why that would be um, so if anyone's got any ideas um, as to why this coral would do that then please pop them in the comments below um, but yeah so it's, it's fine in a couple of days time you see it'll be okay normally it actually covers the epoxy but <laughs> you can actually see that on there and another uh, coral is my toadstool you can probably just see it down there it's quite big actually and they're quite funny because they they kind of they're probably it's probably the most finicky of all my corals where it just flops around <laughs> flops around um, when the lights off and then it starts to open up again I might be able to get a much better shot I go you can just see the underneath there and I'll try and get some shots as I'm talking over this but yeah so that's my toadstool um, I've actually turned off my protein skimmer at the moment but if you have toadstools in, in aquariums they generally recommend that you should have a protein skimmer in there because they actually release a, a toxin um, and it's when in the obviously in the wild the the toadstool when it notices that the water water's gone down with the tides 
releases toxin to take out its competition so yeah if you have any of these in your aquariums especially if it's a small aquarium make sure that you have a protein skimmer on there just to make sure that if it does release those toxins it's not going to take out your other corals so on this rock here you can see that the coralline algae is really exploded um, I placed this rock, this was a newer rock um, that I put into the aquarium and I placed it next to an existing rock which has got quite a lot of coralline algae and you can see it's already just exploded up and onto it whereas one of my older older rocks which isn't near where I had a lot of coralline algae still tiny little pieces here and there uh, but that's going to eventually be covered with green star polyps I'm not too phased I, but ideally with this one like I, I'm not sure what else um, I'll put in there because a the toadstool can get quite quite large um, this mushroom should should stretch out quite a bit a couple of inches and same with the, uh, the the bubble mushroom so I might I might put something else on the other side there um, but I haven't quite decided yet what what I'm going to do kind of just letting these corals settle in and then seeing what they look like once they've been growing for about maybe half a year and then see what else I'm going to put in there so then I've also got my my turbo snails they're still doing really well in here <laughs> funny little things um, they they haven't fallen on their back so much so hopefully they're learning their lesson um, and they're not actually falling falling over so much and despite being called turbo snails actually today they're just going they're being very slow um, but yep yeah, they're doing very good and you actually see here there's a stamatella snail shell near my superman mushroom and the other day before I, I gave the aquarium a water change I noticed the shell was over here by this rock and then there was a bit of white slime coming out from one of the holes so I, I imagine it's because I've got uh, some kind of bristle worm which has probably either um, eaten the snail or the snail has sadly passed and um, been eaten by, by the actual worm itself uh, what's quite interesting at the moment is uh, my I've got lots of brittle stars they've all started to s spread along on this rock I see if I can spot them or normally you can just see them waving their little white arms around as if they're trying to something like you know like a horror movie where a ghost reaches out of like uh, the depths of something I don't know what movie I'm thinking of so <laughs> probably doesn't exist but you can see one here actually just by the bubble tip like, oh, sorry. Let me get back. I can focus. So the um, lots of brittle stars in here. They're doing really well. And I'll see if I can uh, find any more of any of the uh, other live rock inhabitants. I've got loads of copepods. They're normally all over this rock here, but I think it's because I've put the light on and it's it's startled them a little bit. But they're normally all over, all over these rocks here. So the aquarium looks great in the daylight. I'm sure you'd probably see some other people who've got some really crazy reefs. But what I do like about um, my soft corals is when I turn on the blue light, and it's probably hard to pick up on the camera, but the green really glows. And um, it really gives it a really like sci-fi effect. And even the uh, uh, toadstool, sorry, it gets like a um, white, tips to it so it looks like starlight the only one I'm a bit um, not as impressed with is my Superman it's, and it's really difficult to see the camera just does not pick it up I'd probably need a filter but it kind of goes like an orange orange color with really dark blue bubbles and um, which you really can't see in there um, but yeah that, I think that's one great thing about saltwater aquariums is Give, there's just a different dynamic, a different, a different uh, feel. So what you see in um, in this light is just com it's a completely different thing. And obviously the clownfish themselves, they they look really great under the blue light. And it doesn't do it justice on, in on the camera, but um, the the black eye snowflake, my two clownfish, and uh, they look amazing under under the blue light. As these two have been so good. Let's uh, just give them something to eat. Uh, normally qu quite feisty eaters. Um, when I think of uh, clownfish, they really do remind me of cichlids. Um, I, I imagine, I haven't properly looked at that, but I imagine there is a connection between cichlids and, 
and uh, damselfish. Um, but yeah, they uh, they, re they really are quite aggressive eaters. Obviously, the female is much more dominant and aggressive, and if she wants a particular particular bit of food, then she'll make sure that <laughs> she gets it, and the male has to kind of pick up what she doesn't get. But when I feed these two, I kind of target feed them, so I only feed what what they're going to actually consume. So I don't just chuck the food in and then walk off. I put a bit in here and there, just make sure they both get something to eat. Um, and that way I can keep an eye on if, if, if for whatever reason a fish isn't doing too good um, it's a good way of making sure that um, yeah they're all healthy because I could I could just chuck the food in and walk off but then there's no guarantee that the, the male would get enough to eat while the female's um, pigging out and sometimes I put a, like a little piece in to distract the female and then drop a nice big pellet for the male um, but yeah, it takes a bit longer than what I would say most people would probably spend feeding their little fish, but I probably spend between 30 seconds and 60 seconds just making sure that they get they get the right amount of food. You probably notice on the filter or the uh, back compartment which holds the fil filter and protein skimmer and heater, um, it's got coralline algae growing up on, on there as well and <laughs> at first I tried to not uh, let that grow on there I'd be scraping it off <laughs> it's a real pain to get off um, but I decided to give in you know if you can't beat them join them and I actually think it'll probably look a lot nicer having the coralline algae growing up across that, that back part um, it'll blend in with the, with the rock work so yeah that's that's the clownfish saltwater aquarium um, it's all doing really well if you have any questions about you know what I'm doing with the aquarium in, in specific then drop them down below if not I'll see you in the next one